What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Honda Grom performance video. I'm Modest Cody and I'm gonna try to make this actually kind of quick because there's not really too much to talk about. As you read by the title, you know what I'm gonna get into on this one. Um, but you know, given my history of making these, I'll probably end up making another 10 or 12 minute video. But as the title suggests, today I'm going to be talking about the hard racing products that you can buy that have been custom, custom made for the Honda Grom. So the first one is the engine support brace. Let me see if I can get a good shot without making the camera go nuts. So you can see it right there. Nice billet aluminum. It's black and it's super light because it's aluminum, so can't complain there. I do have the Taiga exhaust, so you can see that it did work with it just fine. And hopefully that's working. I'm not getting a good shot at the screen to see what I'm doing. But uh, the bolt right there that is going into this bracket right here, you can see that. I had to reverse. The bolt's supposed to be on the inside and then the nut's supposed to be on this side. And it's kind of weird because the threads are actually on this piece right here. So it's not the ideal setup. But I think with the, uh, the nylock nut back there, It'll be just fine. I'll just check it every now and then. If it has a problem, I'll figure out another solution. But that's what I've done so far. Hopefully the focus is not going to keep doing this to me, but we'll see. So anyways, that went on there really quick. I probably did it in about 10, 15 minutes. I had to remove the bottom um, header because uh, I couldn't get my Allen wrench in there to tighten those down real snug, which is what obviously you want for a brace to minimize vibration. So getting on to what this actually is doing, it is... As you can see, kind of see, it's holding the engine up. It's hooked on to the frame, and the idea is that you're gonna have reduced vibration. So this is noticeable. I think that uh, it's really noticeable when the bike is um, parked. So not necessarily parked, I guess, but at a light or a stop sign, you're just kind of chilling and it's idling. And any of you guys that own these things, you know that when you do that, um, the front of the bike will start vibrating like crazy unless you have your hand on the front brake. So when you're holding that, the bike's real still and you it's perfect. But when you use your foot and use the rear brake, the uh, front forks vibrate like crazy. And then your mirrors are just vibrating like crazy. It's like, especially with these, it looks like wings. They'll like flap and it's like almost like it wants to fly away. So. By the way, I've had some people ask, these are the uh, Bike Master tubed shovel, I think is what it's called. They make them in a variety of different shapes, including like a nice uh, streamlined rectangle that doesn't have these two points on it. Uh, and they're like pretty cheap. I think I paid 60 bucks for them shipped. So how can you go wrong there? They seem pretty high quality. And uh, you know, the front looks pretty good too. So there you go. So anyways, it definitely is noticeable whenever you are uh, sitting still at idle and you're waiting for a light to change or whatever, you lose probably about, I'd say 50% of that vibration that you're getting. Uh, so now I can actually see out of my mirrors while I'm parked instead of having to put my um, hand on the front brake to stabilize the front forks. So also the other thing that you're hoping that it'll minimize is driving vibration. But I don't think there's a huge change there. I feel like the bike actually feels pretty good when I'm driving around, um, when it's actually running. Um, I feel like that's kind of hard to um, to say considering I have the big bore kit on there, the 183. But actually, I feel like that engine is less has less vibration than the stock engine, believe it or not. Uh, especially when you're cruising along, and even when you're kind of slowing, letting the engine bring you to a slow or to a stop, um, it seems like it purrs a little bit better than the actual stock engine. So I don't really see much change while driving, and if it is doing it. I guess I'm just taking it for granted and not really realize it's happening because the bike feels pretty good. Um, for 99 bucks, which I paid for the, the pre-sale price of that, I feel like it's a pretty good deal and definitely uh, makes me happy because I hate the whole vibrating out of control when I am sitting still at idle. So the second one is down here. And this is also, again, custom made by Hard Racing. And let's see if I can get a good shot of it. That's probably good. That's the shift shaft support brace. Hopefully it's coming across good. There you go. So you can see it's got a little 
a little bracket that they gave you and then it's got some spacers and it just bolts right on. Probably took um, 10 minutes to do this one and again same thing for the other one if I haven't said it already 10 minutes to do probably both of these so 20 minutes total. Um, you do have to remove the uh, rear sets and kind of swing them down to get the tension off this uh, linkage but it slipped right on and um, this is probably the most noticeable change out of these two products. So the idea of this one is to help um, make the transition through gears more um, smooth and definitely something you can feel. It's more of a tactile uh, click instead of like, did I actually go into the right gear? Am I still in the previous gear? Um, they say that the other thing is that it's supposed to minimize the false neutrals, which if you um, own the spike, you know that switching from first to second, a lot of times you'll kind of stay in neutral. You'll feel it click into second gear, but then as you give it gas, it'll rev out of control because it fell back into neutral. It's pretty annoying. And I would say that this doesn't entirely, rem it's not an entire uh, remedy to that, excuse me, but definitely helps a little bit. I'd say it's probably about 30% better. Just a rough estimate. <laughs> so um, in the end, with these two, I'd say that I would go with the um, the shift shaft support first, and then if you want to spend the extra, go ahead and go with the engine brace. I think the shift shaft was around 60 bucks uh, shipped. I'm not exactly sure. Take a look at their website. Oh, and by the way, I'm not getting paid to do this. I didn't get these products for free. I paid a normal price like anyone else would for them. I just think they're good products, and I like hard racing. So. Um, they're both pretty light because they're aluminum, so you're not adding too much weight. And then the other benefit to doing this, I think if you kind of take a step back and look at the long run, is that you're reducing wear on um, you know, the engine and the transmission. So if the engine's vibrating less, there's like microscopic wear that's being reduced there, so that'll help with longevity and health. And then with the transmission, if you're not pulling down that shift shaft at a weird angle and you have something supporting it right there in the middle, because it is kind of a flawed design and at some point it might cause damage to that little shaft or you know the transmission itself up inside so you're gonna help with um, basically the health and the longevity of the engine and transmission so in the end are these really performance modifications I think they really kind of are actually because you're you're helping with um, the engine and obviously any upgrade to the engine I guess could be kind of viewed as performance based so that's pretty much it for those two things. I think if you're on the fence about doing it, remember you're buying from a pretty good company. If you talk to them on the phone, they're going to help you out. And that's what I think is uh, what sets them apart from other companies that I've bought things from for this bike. And the other thing is that it's made in America and um, pretty high quality stuff that's uh, you know been kind of handcrafted to the point of uh, they've inspected these things pretty closely even though it's been CNC milled. Someone took some time to design this stuff. One more thing. I keep getting questions about this, so I'm gonna go ahead and address it real quick. I have the Man in the Box Fender Eliminator kit, and um, it's a pretty good kit. People keep asking me about the um, license plate and how I've mounted it, and I try to keep it out of the image pretty much every time I do a video, but um, and it's hard to tell with a piece of paper stuck to it like that. But first things first, I don't know if you can see, but right here, I have some foam that I've stuffed in there because this light, it's awesome, I love the way it looks, but as you get going, especially when you're revving up through the gears to get through the power bam, this will vibrate up and down in there ever so slightly, and it makes this really annoying noise, so I stuck some foam in there to kind of remedy that. I'm not getting a good focus here, but it is in there if you can't see it, and it helped tremendously. It completely negated that noise, and I think it's also gonna help with the longevity of this light so it doesn't get rattled to death. But with the license plate, in my previous videos, you might have seen it. I used to have it vertical, just went up and down, um, but that was with the stock rear suspension. So I'm about to make a video on this. It's my next one, actually. But that's the YSS suspension, um, and it has that oil piggyback on it, this little can right here. So what happened was, when this was vertical, is that it was touching right here. You can see that with the sunlight. Um, and it was vibrating as I was driving. Um, so it was really annoying, so I bent the plate forward a little bit, so hoping that it would uh, kind of
kind of fix that and it did for a while but then eventually it kind of started rattling again because the plate started moving back somehow so I went ahead and did the horizontal mount so I kind of left the paper at an angle here so you can see a couple things so first of all it's not actually mounted through the real mount hole um, let's see if I can get a good shot of this so there's the bracket and there's a hole so I used to originally when I first switched over to this I had a little piece sorry it's bouncing around here a little piece going from here to here a little three dollar bracket I bought from Lowe's but it kind of vibrated again so instead I went back and I put a little hole in there and just ran a bolt through it as you can see I missed up missed the first one and put it a little far out so measure it correctly I just was being stupid and that seems to be pretty good I don't get any rattling and it works hopefully that's uh, legit no one said anything to me yet but it seems to uh, work just fine and I like it because normally if I had it centered you can't do it because it'll bump against the exhaust here so instead it's off centered a little bit and I kind of like it like that because it kind of gives the bike a little character in the rear it's not perfectly symmetrical um, and with the exhaust being like you know one exhaust on one side it helps kind of balance it out too at the same time of leaving it a little little character since it's not perfect I think it looks pretty good when the papers are on there too so unfortunately I don't want to really give that information out but that's the rear view of the bike so if you're in that um, predicament of how to mount that and you have the piggyback on there I think you should go with horizontal um, or you can actually bend that mount before you mount it on there the man in the box fender eliminator kit bend it forward a little bit so the plate sits more out I couldn't do it once it was mounted and I didn't feel like taking it off so all right guys that's pretty much it for today just a quick recap if you are interested in buying these two products you're gonna spend about 160 right now I think the engine brace will go up a about 40 or 50 bucks here in the next few weeks or a couple months maybe uh, and I think it's still worth it but I would go with the shift shaft support first and then if you like it uh, go ahead and move forward with the engine brace for a total of right now about 160 I've spent totally worth it and I can feel a change which is always good to kind of have instant gratification when you spend money on parts to actually feel it make a difference so if you guys like what you saw today, as usual, please like and subscribe. And then if you have any questions or comments, of course, then leave a comment. Um, I try to get back to those as soon as possible. Sometimes I miss them, but um, bear with me. Um, other than that, guys, thanks for uh, watching and grom on, guys, grom on. Actually, I forgot one thing. I was going to turn the bike on so you could see um, the mirrors vibrating less. Now, a lot of you guys don't have these mirrors, obviously obviously like I do so just kind of take this as a grain of salt but you can see uh, the vibration of them and maybe it'll help you give an idea of if it'll help reduce your vibration as well vibrating but it's really really been reduced I mean usually before I did this these were moving so much that you couldn't see a you know an image in the mirror when you're sitting on it looking back behind you and then let's see if you can see this well it's definitely not as drastic as when I'm sitting on it when I'm sitting on it they come to a complete standstill when the front brake is pulled in so that was the most noticeable change I saw when I put this brace on there. It's, it's extremely noticeable, I'll say that. All right, guys. That's it for real this time.